Good afternoon, Father Ashman, provincial of the Chicago province and chair of the Board of Trustees. Father Lenchak, president of Divine Word College. <coughs> Fellow trustees, esteemed faculty, formators and staff, SVD conferers, SSPS sisters, honored guests, students, and last but not least, graduates of the class of 2014. I'm quite honored to be here today speaking to all of you on this very joyous occasion. Indeed, academic commencement ceremonies are wonderful occasions to give recognition to students for having reached an important milestone in their lives. Like an athlete, Let's just won a gold medal or a runner who has just crossed the finish line. Each of you graduates can now breathe this sigh of relief. You have definitely crossed the finish line. Yes, you have finally done it. You have overcome all sorts of trials and obstacles to achieve this monumental goal. <laughs> However, today is only the beginning. As they say, the ending is a new beginning. Well, this academic commencement celebrates an ending of your journey here at Divine Word College. It is really a celebration of new beginnings for you. Well, every beginning has its own challenges and uncertainties. You graduates need not be afraid, appropriately expressed, to step into the future, but can press on toward the ultimate goal and believe that nothing is impossible with God. Allow me to share my own story as a testimony of an of the impossible made possible. Twenty-five years ago, on this very same place, and probably on this very same day, I too sat where you graduate, all sitting today. On a similar beautiful Mayflower day in 1989, I also walked up the steps to receive my diploma. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined myself being here today to speak to you as a commencement speaker. When I first entered the Minor Seminary in 1979 at St. Augustine Seminary in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, many people didn't even expect that I would last the first semester. As a shy young teenager, believe it or not, I was more interested in sports than, acad and than academics. I once failed religion class in the seminary. <laughs> when I first came here to the college in 1984, I was so unprepared that I had to take remedial classes. One of the classes that I had to take was basic catechism, which was taught by Father Jim Hyer. Do you remember that, Father Jim? <laughs> it was only through his goodness and kindness and generosity that I even passed that <laughs> When I look back at my life's journey, I'm amazed at how I got here today. Since I was neither the best nor the brightest, I had to work very hard in my studies. However, as time went on and I, as I relent, relentlessly worked at my studies, I grew passionate in the pursuit of the truth, especially the knowledge of the Bible. Relying completely upon the grace of God and with unwavering persistence, I pressed forward always trusting in God who can do amazing and even impossible things. 
like Mary of Nazareth, I too believe in the words of the angel who declared unto her, Nothing is impossible with God. The story of Diana and Neon is also a good example of someone who dared to believe in the impossible. On September 2nd, 2013, at the age of 64, Diana Nia completed a 110-mile swim from Cuba to Florida, fighting off jellyfish and chilly waters, not to mention the danger of getting attacked by fierce sharks. Diana swam for more than 48 hours to reach her goal, which she had previously attempted four times and failed. She is now the first person to officially complete the swim without the help of a shark cage. For me, this is a tremendous physical feat and a display of relentless willpower. She definitely went to great lengths to achieve her dream. I'm sure all of you graduates can also relate to my story or that of Mary of Nazareth, or that of Diana Nia. Some of you probably couldn't imagine that this day could ever be possible for you. All of you first came to this unimaginable field of dreams with little expectation, thinking that you probably would last a month or possibly a semester. But you have not only come and seen but staying. Several of you barely spoke a word of English when you first arrived at this college. You probably had to use both hands and feet to get your message across. But look at you now. You speak with clarity and eloquent eloquence and are filled with wisdom and insight. <laughs> I believe that each one of you graduates in your own unique way is a testimony of the impossible made possible. Through hard work and perseverance, we now honor you for having run the race and crossed the finish line. For me, the Christian life, especially the missionary life, it's like running a race. It requires self-discipline. It requires tremendous effort. It demands hard work and perseverance. The athlete metaphor, therefore, it's quite appropriate for this occasion. Why can an athlete? Each one of you has worked hard and practiced self-discipline in body, mind, and so, without self-discipline of an athlete, you probably would not be here today. Interestingly, St. <clears throat> Paul frequently uses the athletic metaphor, especially the energy of running, to describe his own missionary activity. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 25, Paul writes, and I quote, Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run as so to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. St. Paul, the greatest missionary of our time, describes a Christian living as a race. Just as the athlete who endures many obstacles to reach the finish line, Paul encourages his fellow Christians to exercise self-restraint and willpower in order to win the prize. Since you graduates have not have not run the race in vain. You now wear a crown of victory. 
unlike the crown, uh, the crowns received by first century athletes, which were made of various perishable leaves and or vines. Your crown, however, will last forever. It is a crown of knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and righteousness, fitting for a worthy champion. Obviously, you could not have done it alone. There have been many people who accompany and encourage you along the way. Perhaps it was the kind invitation from your recruiter, Father Joseph Chow Nguyen, or Father Chu Mai, that brought you here. You might have dropped out of the race if it had not been your teachers and staff who patiently urged you to press forward. Your formators, spiritual directors, and tutors too have played a significant role in nurturing you, nudging you along the way. You must not forget your parents, family members, friends, and religious community members who continue to stand by and with you in good times as well as in bad times. In honoring you graduates, we actually honor anyone who played a role in your success. We also honor this great institution, the Divine Word College, and the Society of the Divine Word for their generosity and remarkable mission. In every way, we all have run a good race, and therefore can now press on forward to the future. You graduates from DWC are the luckiest, or should I say the most blessed of all college graduates of the class of 2014 in the whole wide world. Say amen. 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 You have acquired more than simply knowledge and wisdom here. The education you have received includes spiritual formation and liberal arts curriculum and mission preparation within an environment that teaches and honors the rich cultural diversity of the world that comes directly from the mission statement of the college. In other words, you have been trained and formed as missionary disciples. Pope Francis's apostolic uh, 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 exhortation in Gandhi Gaumium, or the joy of the gospel, has been the focus of much discussion and attention over this past year. As a divine word missionary, I am particularly inspired by his description of the church as a missionary disciple. In paragraph 40 of Evangelii Gaudium, Pope Francis writes, I quote, The church is herself a missionary disciple. Pope Francis stresses that every baptized member of the church is called to evangelize or to be a missionary. However, a missionary disciple must not must do more than just simply evangelize. Rather, he or she must radiate and demonstrate the joy of one's faith, which is the sign of an authentic follower or disciple of Jesus. As evangelizers or missionary disciples, Francis says that, quote, well, that they must never look like someone who has just come back from a funeral or whose lives seem like Lent without Easter. Since Christians are genuinely an Easter people, the people who celebrate Easter at season time, they must radiate joy as if they have just seen the risen Christ. Jehovah Shaddam once says, Joy is the infallible sign of the presence of God. And I believe he's absolutely right. I also wholeheartedly agree with Pope Francis when he says that joy is a hallmark of our Christian faith and missionary spirituality. So how can you 
go and make a difference? As missionary disciples, you must remember that love takes precedence over knowledge. Again, I quote St. Paul, who writes, Knowledge inflates pride, but love builds up. Paul is aware of the potential danger of knowledge, especially knowledge that knows it knows and takes pride or takes pride in its knowing, which is an ever-present menace. Well, there's nothing wrong with knowledge per se. You graduates from Divine Word College who have been trained as missionary disciples must allow knowledge to give way to faith, hope, and love in your lives. And the greatest of this is love. St. Paul writes, If I speak in human and angelic tongues, have the gift of prophecy, and can comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I can nothing. Love, I got it. Is the sine qua non, a condition without which it could not be of the Christian life. St. Paul's agape, or what I call self-sacrificial love, is much loftier than Plato's eros, or self-interest love. The missionary life is a life of agape. It is this giving of oneself in love that makes the life of the church possible. Furthermore, love is the absolute and indispensable feature of the believers. Without love, no matter how many degrees or diplomas one has, or how famous one is, one has lost his or her way and is as good as dead. You graduates are not dead are good for nothing because you have acquired more than philosophical knowledge here at the Garden Word College. As missionary disciples, you have learned that in this world and in this present age, love takes precedence over human wisdom and knowledge. So how can you make a difference in today's world and church? by being missionaries, disciples, who radiate the joy and love of the good news of Jesus Christ. Recalling the blessings of the past and being grateful for the present, you now can press on forward to the future, to have full confidence we have full confidence in you that you can make a difference as you both be asserted or assert in your graduation theme. Go and make a difference. Since you have been formed, trained, and educated as missionary disciples, you are fully equipped with all the tools and virtues of today's missionary. Therefore, into the deep waters as the early apostles did at the invitation of Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, believing that nothing is impossible with God. Furthermore, like St. Paul, may you patiently run the race that is set before you, fixing your eyes toward the goal the price of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. Go forth then and use the gifts that you have received to become a source of inspiration and blessing for the world and our church. Congratulations and best wishes to you graduates of the class of 2014.